Hey everybody, how's it going? So I've been getting a few requests here lately on what charging setup I'm using and how I have it set up to charge as far as directly plugging it into a wall and or using it as a travel charger with a battery or just the different multiple options you can do. So right now I am using the ISDT Smart Charger. It is the SC. 608 uh, which is comes in this box right here it is 150 watts it can uh, take an input voltage between 9 and 32 volts which that will be important here in a little bit and it's amps it can take up to 8 input again that will be important a little bit later I am also using their parallel board this thing is pretty awesome. Um, it's the ISDT Safe Parallel Adapter. It is a solid block of aluminum. And there is a uh, review out there showing somebody who took it apart on YouTube. If I can find it, I'll link it in the description. Um, and there is plenty of other reviews on this already. So I'm not really doing a review. Just going to go over how I have my setup since I've been getting requests on that. Um, Alright, and here's the box on that. So I guess it's the PC. 4860. See if uh, you can see that there. Hopefully, this lighting's good for you guys. I'm trying something new with that. So, as you can see right off the bat, these are really small. Um, great for traveling. Um, but I've actually turned it into my primary charger right now just because of its ease of use, size, and the amount of power it actually puts out. And I'm not charging a lot of batteries at once, I'm doing about an average of four at a time. Uh, sometimes just two at a time. Enough to get out there and get a you know a few packs in a day and get better. So first thing first, this comes in the box with just this and a little bit of paper. This on the other hand comes in the box with the uh, charging cable to plug into the charger and the uh, balance lead cable. How I'm using this is directly off the wall. So what I've done is I've took an HP charging brick for a laptop, cut off the cable, and added a XT60 to it, and plug it directly in to the input. Now what I was mentioning earlier, which I said was important, is the voltage it can take. So if you have one of these laying around the house or just buy one offline, you want to make sure you're looking at, let's see here, if I can find it now, of course, and 10 minutes later, boom. Alright, so you have your input and you have your output. So this output is at 19 volts and 4.74 amps, and as you can see, it can handle up to 32, so 19 is, is within that uh, standard, and we know that this could do up to 8 amps on charging, so 5 amps is plenty as long as you're not charging anything over 5, obviously, otherwise you'll damage this. Um, I also did a Dell, which is a little skinnier but bigger. Uh, it has the same 19 output, but it has uh, a little bit more amps to it. I think this one was like something like 7, 6.7. So, again, just allows me to charge at a higher rate. So if I was putting uh, more packs on it. So what I'm going to do now is go over a few more things I've done. Um, just to make things easier. So with the Tiny Whoops being popular, I took one of their boards and chopped off the leads it came with, which were the banana plugs put a XT60 on there so now I can parallel charge directly off this and the Fat Shark battery um, I just daisy chain that in there very simple also made another little adapter here XT60 you know I actually don't know what this one's called um, to be honest I don't use it a lot coming being new in the hobby but I had another charger that came with a lot of different plugs and since I went to a LiPo in my Tyrannus, it needed this particular plug. So, 
by making this, I can now plug directly in here or off the board here and use this adapter. But what I'm going to show you guys today is how to make this. So I have an extra one here that's a Dell charger. So I had already cut the lead off, which this is the cable that's going directly to your uh, laptop when you want to charge it. So I did already cut it. Um, and then this is your power cable, obviously, that goes in the back. You can see that right there. Sorry if I'm not getting this in frame. Uh, this is kind of an impromptu setup I'm doing here. So let's get this out of the way for now. There's your extra XT60s. Now we're only going to be using this one, but when you're soldering to create a heat sink so you don't melt any of the plastic, it is a good idea to go ahead and connect those together so the heat will dissipate through the, the body. Get that soldering iron heated up. Now, while we wait for that, what you need to know about the cabling on these which can change on different models is which one is going to be your positive ground and so forth and there's always gonna be three wires usually in these uh, one of them and I wish I could show you this but like I said I did cut off my uh, laptop charger but one of the cables goes to the outside ring of the power plug that goes into your laptop the other cable goes into the inside of the ring not the pin but the inside of the ring now the pin is a separate cable, which is this green one here. Um, that one we are not using. It's usually just a confirmation ground. Um, we're going to be using the white and the black. Now, what, how you could tell which one is positive or negative, other than the obvious usual colors that are standardized but do change with different companies, is going to be looking, again, at this sticker. So let me see if I can get this in focus here. If you look right here where my finger's pointing, there's those three tiny little circles. And I know this camera's probably not going to show it very well. But in that three circles, you have a full circle, negative, wrapping around a solid circle to a full circle positive. And what you're looking for is the negative is wrapping over the positive. What that means is the negative is the outside of that plug that we cut off and the positive is the inside of that uh, plug that we cut off. So when you do sh um, cut that plug off, you strip back the jacket and you see what color of wire is going inside and outside. You can also use a uh, multimeter, um, just like this one, and you can do a continuity test, which I did on my first one by just uh, you know touching the inside and then touching the opposite side of the wire to make sure you are getting it correct and not burning up your uh, charger the first time you plug it in. All right. There we go, like that. And then like I said earlier, we're not using this green wire, so we're just gonna snip that off at the base slow as down as you can. These strings, we're not going to need those. Alright, which leaves us with a positive and negative wire. Go ahead and strip these down. this extra just a tip when you're working with wires like this and you're cutting off and you're getting all these little scattered pieces make sure you clean all those up before working on your quad because uh, the motors are magnets and all those little pieces will get inside the motors so keep that in mind all right so we have a little flux here just dip them in Bring in our little rotor riot helping hand here. 
You all know him off of that uh, stop motion video. If you don't, please uh, go ahead and check that out. Alright, so we're just pre tinning the cable. And the solder should just wick right into it since we added the flux. Slide that down. So, looking at your XT60 connector, again, we're going to be using this one. And it has a negative and a positive. So, I'm gonna go in there just like that. So again, I'm going to slide the white wire in there, grab a soldering iron, double check, it does show a positive sign, so go ahead and apply the soldering iron to both the wire and the XT60, bring the solder into it, we'll let it heat up, and it should just soak right in there. Alright, real solid. Take off the heat sink now if you want. Toss it aside. And the first thing we're going to do, just out of safety, anytime we're messing with uh, electricity, is add a little bit of electrical tape. Now that we have that on there, we can go ahead and test it. First thing we're going to do is plug this into the wall. So far so good. And we're going to take our positive lead and our, let me get this on the screen for you maybe. Yeah, this is a mess, sorry. Negatively, and we're reading 19.7. If you remember on the uh, sticker, it says, let's see, right around here, 19.5. So we're within that standard. All right, put that aside. Now, knowing that's providing the right amount, go ahead and plug this in. see came right up and again there's already a lot of reviews on this so I'm not going to go over everything but this is pretty cool if I uh, grab let's say a battery here and the black wire is going to be the negative so plug balance lead in And you can tell it picks up what it is already. Put this in. All right, this thing has a beautiful screen on it. All you do is click down those wheel. As you see, it picked up, it's a four cell. I usually charge mine at one amp. Uh, I don't like to, I don't mind waiting. I don't like to overdo them. And from here you can choose charge, discharge, or storage. So you choose that and you literally just hit start. I'm not going to do that since this battery is good to go, but that kind of gives you an example, and I hope this uh, helped out. 
explaining my setup and how I'm using this charger and a good way to power it other than taking, for example, a LiPo directly to it, which this was its kind of its intended field use. So if you're out in the field, this is another great way you could charge a smaller battery. So if I could use this one to charge, for example, uh, the one cells for the tiny whoops. All right. So hopefully that wasn't too long. Hopefully that got you all the information that you were looking for. And if you have any other questions, just leave them in the comments below. Uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. I do have, I can grab the camera here, another project coming up um, for you guys that I'll be launching soon. I know those are five inch arms, but I'm hoping to get some six inch arms and do a better quad setup. And uh, I do have my vlog three coming out with the snowboarding trip and me wrecking out my uh, RR5 Alien into a good three foot of snow. So stay tuned and enjoy.